first one is you, that is a young doctor. She's 26 years old. She's engaged to be married to Joe, who is a fellow doctor. He's handsome, he's charming, he's rich. He's also very sweet and kind. Um, but then he does the unthinkable and cheats on Yasmin. Uh, she is, of course, distraught. But then she uh, goes off and has revenge sex, which shocks her even more because she's always thought of herself as a good girl, a, a good person, um, a follower of the rules. Um, and then she does this thing that to, to her mind is a terrible uh, travesty of all of her principles and she doesn't tell Joe about it. He at least has confessed. Um, little does she know that Joe is in therapy for his sex addiction. So at the start of the novel, everything is going really well. She's worried about her parents meeting his mother because they come from very different worlds and different backgrounds. Um, but she's kind of sorted, she has a life plan. And then everything kind of implodes and explodes simultaneously. The, the the dinner party that's organized by Harriet. Uh, Harriet is Joe's mother, and she is a completely fascinating character who I feel I recognize. She's a kind of North London feminist who has very, very set points of view. And she is a, a massive architect of the story going forward. Yes. So Harriet, um, yeah, as you say, is a sort of North London liberal lovey. Um, Yasmin is very anxious at the beginning about the two families coming together for the first time. Um, but in fact, Harriet embraces the Garamis, um, Yasmin's parents, uh, takes them to her bosom, particularly Yasmin's mother, um, befriends her, which Yasmin's rather suspicious about. Um, yeah, so it's sort of sort of integration by steamroller is um, <laughs> is, is is Harriet's approach. Um, but, you know, she's also got a good heart, Harriet, you know, there's, um, and she kind of redeems herself, I think, in the story. I mean, there's a way in which both she and Joe, at a very superficial level, could be read as, let's say, examples of white privilege, or in um, Joe's cases, white male privilege. But I don't see them like that at all. I mean, they've got their own complexities, their own demons, their own very real problems that they're struggling with as well. Certainly, certainly felt with Anisha, um, with with Yasmin's mother, that you 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 put you you end up with a woman who is every bit as much of a fighter as Harriet is a fighter, just from a very, very different vantage point. And I'm not gonna give away what the big, in a sense, the big thing we don't know that we don't find out till the end of the book. But why did you want, Anisha, as you say, becomes very involved with Harriet um, to the extent of moving into the house, mm. which is quite an extreme action. What were you trying to show us about the cultures of the two women when they start sharing a house and again with Harriet's very very you know, she's very interested in the way I slightly felt that someone like me you say would have been incredibly interested in going to India when I was younger because there was a touch of exoticness about it yeah. and you indeed talk about that and someone's saying oh Harriet just likes things that are different yes yes uh, uh, and and yes been um feels that Harriet might not be totally sincere or there's an element of exotification or she's collecting uh, Anissa or, or sort of treating her like a pet and then she will drop her and dismiss her. Um, and she's making a lot of assumptions, let's say. And Yasmin quite rightly resents it when other people make assumptions about her based on her ethnicity or her gender or anything else. But Yasmin herself is making assumptions left, right and centre. And not only does she make assumptions about Harriet, 
she makes assumptions about her own mother because and I think we all do this about our parents. I mean, you know, she's she's just Ma. She's just Ma in the kitchen and she's um, doing what mothers do. And she doesn't really, Yasmin doesn't really recognise that her own mother is quite an extraordinary person in her own right until she enters Harriet's house. And it's actually Harriet. Um, but, 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 you know, in, in oblique ways and roundabout ways that opens Yasmin's eyes to who her mother actually is. Yes, that's very interesting. I thought all the way through from both the children, you get the sense that they, they are slowly beginning to see their parents as human beings with their own foibles and problems and strengths and weaknesses. And that the other character who's obviously very important in this is Baba who yeah. is Yasmin's father and also her brother Arif. And you, you have this, basically these few characters who play out so many different facets of life, but the awakening of all the children into being grown up enough to realize that their parents uh, were complicated, uh, especially Harriet, I thought was absolutely fascinating. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, I find it interesting that, you know, the adult, um, child <laughs> relationships with their own parents it, it's really knotty and it's really complicated and it's it's also very fertile terrain for um or, or family secrets and family myths and what is the foundational myth of each family um, and how does that therefore reverberate through the generations um, Yasmin, early on in the book, is quite envious of um, Joe and Harriet, the Sangster family. She thinks, oh, we don't talk about anything in our household. Uh, you know, we're, we're sort of secretive or we don't discuss things like sex and other stuff openly. And the Sangsters discuss everything. Whereas the reality is... <laughs> really rather different from that they talk about a lot of stuff in Joe's family but they can't talk about the fundamentally important stuff because they don't understand it um and and that actually they have bigger secrets um than the Garami household so it's again I'm interested in playing with those inversions as well as the, the kind of maybe the stereotype of um, a South Asian family is more closed and therefore more backwards and a, um, a white liberal family would be more progressive and therefore, you know, that that's the pinnacle, as it were. And I just like taking those things apart and looking at, you know, the multi-layered aspects of what actually lies beneath. Yes, and certainly Baba's and um, oh. Arif, the son, has this notion that Baba has these insanely high ambitions for him, which in fact Baba doesn't. But I thought Arif's again awakening about that was very interesting. That he he sort of grew up into the cliche that mm. that's how it was, when in fact it wasn't. Mm, mm. And, and a lot of Baba's um, fear. I mean, he's often furious with Arif. For, for not having a job or not having a proper job, um, for doing a degree in sociology, which is totally useless as far as Barbara is concerned. But beneath the, the, the anger is fear, you know, because he knows that as a young Muslim man, he, he's going to find life a bit more difficult um, than, than others perhaps might. And he's already been profiled in the past. So uh, and beneath that fear is love. And I think, again, I, I'm interested in examining, you know, what, what we see on the surface and what the reality is and really delving into the, the you know, into that gap. Yes, well, that's fantastic. I read in an interview with you the other day that I was looking up before talking to you that, you talk about the research that you need to do. Now, you have done absolutely phenomenal. I, I read your book around the same time as I watched This Is Going to Hurt, <laughs> the story <laughs> of the junior doctor. And I thought, what has she been doing? This medical research is so amazing and it's so 
lightly threaded through the book that you know you feel like it's that you yourself are a doctor because there's no sense that you've hoiked in the hoiked in the stuff so I, I think you're not a doctor but I, your research is extraordinarily impressive so did you go and live in a hospital how did you do it <laughs> I mean we all have experience of the NHS don't we but personally yeah. and family and friends but I mean Yasmin works in a uh, uh, care of the elderly board my grandmother's been in hospital she's no longer alive but when she was uh, I also did an enormous amount of reading you know there's lots and lots of popular books by doctors memoirs um, I also um, had to delve into medical journals so I'm still getting emails from the subscriptions department of the New England Journal of Medicine saying come back and resubscribe I was like, no I don't need to do it anymore <laughs> I've done all that research but the point about research really as um, you say is that you have to put it away I mean you don't want to overlace these things into the book they're there to serve the purpose of the characters and the plot and so on but it, at the same time it's important to get it right and I did have doctor friends read my drafts as well and let me know if you know if I'd gone um astray in any way but you know I got I got the green light I got the thumbs up from them well it's very it's very very impressive the um yeah. So how do, how do you feel that, um, you know, your writing has moved and developed since Brick Lane? I mean, the um, it's a long time. I know you've written other books in between time, but this book has that same vibrant, extraordinary feeling that you've captured so many aspects of life and love and disaster and joy into one package. Um, did it was it an enjoyable thing to write? Yeah, I mean, you know, writing is sometimes torture. Let's be frank about that. And I think every writer <laughs> would acknowledge that. But it also it came out of two separate stories, actually. One was about Harriet and one was about Yasmin. And as soon as I, I wasn't sure I was going to end up writing either. But once I had this sort of light bulb moment of what if I put them together, I knew this was the book that I had to write and I knew it was going to be a lot of fun to write and it really was and I think you know the lots I'd like to think that each book is different in lots of ways from the previous book but I think the one thing that hasn't changed in my fundamental approach to writing as in life is that you can you can talk about and write about very serious things without losing your sense of humor and I feel that comedy is essential to, you know, to counter pessimism and to just embrace all our human folly and striving with compassion. 